My name is Sarah Lynn Stafford and I am 33 years old. I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when I was 4 years old and um, life has always been really hard. Um, I've always been a brittle diabetic and recently, like in my 20s is when I started getting complications which led to, um, I'm pretty much blind <laughs> in my right eye, but, um, the first time that I noticed I was different from other kids, um, is probably in preschool and it had to do with food. I can't remember what the teacher was passing out, but like we were all sitting in a circle and she was like passing it out and she came to me and she's like, no, sir, you can't have this. And I think that's the first time I felt like there's something wrong with me or I was different. Um, but usually like the only time I felt different was at school because like you know, kids were also super mean. They treated me like I had a, a contagious disease, like they were going to get the diabetes if they hung out with me or, um, um, you know, or like sometimes I would get really low and, and fall in the dining hall at school and people just, everyone would stare at me and, um, you know, and like, oh, she has diabetes, you know, like, so I think at school was like the only time I really felt different. Or like when my sisters would be able to get like uh, like a slushy or something and my mom told me that I couldn't because I was diabetic. So I've been on dialysis a year and your wait time on the transplant list begins when your dialysis start date is. Um, but I just recently got activated which means like I had to go through a series of tests to make sure I was okay for surgery and I got uh, c cleared for everything and um, I got a I got approved for a kidney pancreas transplant and the reason for that is if I were to get just the kidney transplant my diabetes could likely destroy that new transplant and so if they also did the double transplant with the pancreas, it would sort of cure my diabetes. Well, you know, I'd have a working pancreas and the kidneys, so there wouldn't be a chance of high blood sugars destroying that kidney, that new kidney. Yeah. The first year of dialysis was probably one of the worst years of my entire life, and I'd been through a lot. Um, it began with just getting these excruciating headaches. Like, I can't even, it's a hundred times worse than a migraine. It's just like this, It's. it feels like someone's taking hands and like squeezing your skull like super tight. Like, it's just this pressure headache. And then like I would throw up during dialysis. Um, and then after being on it for a few months, my hair started to come out in the shower, like chunks and the texture of my hair was like straw it was just like that's the only thing I liked about myself and so I think that's why like it was so hard like because it was like the one thing that made me feel confident and like made me feel pretty and it just like it started falling out and um it was terrible <laughs> it was it was one of the I the hardest things to get through like you know people would be like oh it's just gonna grow back um it's just hair you could wear a wig but it, like like I love optimism but like it doesn't change like what was happening you know so um, but it's recently started growing back and and I finally cut like 12 inches off of it um, back in May and it's already growing slowly so yeah things have calmed down since um, the hell I went through this last year <laughs> So many times that I've almost died or, or I did die for a few minutes and came back to life um, 
but it's like there, there has to be a reason right um, that I'm still here like there's stuff I need to do <laughs> honestly what keeps me going is um, being in school I want to be a nurse and um, I'm a caregiver right now for someone and um, I've always kind of like been one of those people who like loves other people more than themselves uh, what I need is to live and so what that I mean it's it's kind of sad that we live in a country where we have to pay so much money for these procedures and surgeries and um, I mean even um, with state aid like Medicare or Medi-Cal they don't pay for everything so um, I'm still responsible for a portion and if I want both transplants then I have to pay a percentage of it. The amount I need to raise for everything um, is about $20,000 and um, we've raised I think we're at 8500 now so we're almost halfway there <laughs> and so we're uh, putting this fundraiser on tonight and doing um, silent auctions and we've had so many awesome people donate like amazing gifts to, and it's all going towards uh, my transplant fund <laughs> as soon as I get my transplants I'm going to travel like I that's not something I've always wanted to do and when my kidneys failed and I actually could not travel, it, I was like, okay, when I get my transplant, I'm gonna travel. I'm gonna finish school, probably get married. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so my name is Lisbeth Soro and I'm the spa manager here in Alleviating Whispering Waters Day Spa. Our goal today is to be able to help um, Zaraline. Uh, she's a sweet lady. I met her back at school when I was going for my aesthetics license. And um, I felt always attracted to her because her kind spirit and her willingness to help other people. Um, she wants to become a nurse. She has a lot of dreams. She's very talented um, and very sweet person. So. We are just trying to do our best to help her and support her and show her and bring her hope in this difficult time. Uh, so we appreciate everything that other business owners also have been doing for her and helping us, you know, uh, this day. Uh, I'm here today to help support Sarah Lynn with some of her medical expenses for her hopefully upcoming um, kidney and pancreal uh, transplants. And so a lot of us here in the community just want to help her in any way we can. Tonight I am giving a portion of the proceeds for my sales back to her and for any future events she might have I'll also be donating items for auction as well. Sarah Lynn and I went to school two years ago in the City College Aesthetics program and she has always been a super positive person and I see her circumstances and um, yeah, I don't know how she does it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I want to do something to help. Our goal is $20,000. Um, her insurance will only cover 80% of the cost of her surgery, so we're going to help her finish um, raising the rest of the money. And we have a donation page set up uh, on Facebook and uh, our event page for the Spa Night Fundraiser for Sarah Lynn. We are going to be posting up our online silent auction link there so you can um, do your, some of your holiday shopping um, on the website for um, the auction. Mm -hmm. She's always um, super positive and um, she would have to miss school sometimes and um, I didn't realize what she was actually um, going through and um, yeah she's just she doesn't let her circumstances define her and she deserves a chance.